Fred Sardisco with the Santa Monica Harbor Patrol. Today we're going to be giving a little demonstration to the task force, the safety task force that's on the pier, the police officers. We're just going to go over a little awareness level training of ocean rescues and how we can integrate and how they can help us and we work together uh, to complete our mission of helping to save lives and protect the pier. So today we're going to be doing a little rescue simulation with this uh, mannequin. When it's wet, it weighs about 150 pounds. We're going to be rescuing it in the water and bringing it up the Stokes basket here to simulate uh, our first response. Equipment is in here, all the different apartments. Then we're going to uh, we'll go over the rescue tube a little bit on, on the use and some safety considerations. Then we'll all jump in together. We're going to throw the mannequin in the water and we'll all go together underneath the pier. And whoever wants to rescue, we'll get the shot. We'll also operate the Stokes basket and bring the mannequin over to the Stokes basket. If you don't feel comfortable jumping off from the, the top of the pier deck, we can go to the lower fish deck at the west end, or if you go down the ladder, jump off the, the catwalk down below. It's up to you. Don't, don't even say that. We're all okay. <laughs> all right. Don't entertain the thought. All right. Sounds good. So, as you know, we have our dive room in here. Um, all the dive team members have their individual equipment. Um, they have wetsuits, the points of control devices, the regulators, everything they need. We also have our uh, RDUs, which is the Rapid Diver Unit. Uh, I'll bring it out. So we, we carry two Rapid Diver Units. Sorry about that. We're going to talk about this before. This is going to be for a quick, hasty search. You're going to have about 10 minutes of air on this. Uh, you're only, we're limited on the depth that we can go, about 33 feet is, is the limit. Uh, if we're going to be here at the West End, most likely we'll have done our full uh, scuba equipment. Uh, that way we get more time on the bottom if we need it. And the bottom is how far? Uh, depending on the tide, about 20, 25 feet, 30 feet. So you, you can't go all the way down with that? You yeah. can. You can go all the way down to the bottom. The deeper you go, the faster you go through air. So it's really ideal to be closer in, in the shallower waters. Yeah. It kind of goes over your neck like a, like a horseshoe. Horse collar. Underwater fleet carrier. So we have the buoyancy control device, we have a marker buoy uh, for last known position. We have a we carry mask. We have scissors here in case we got get caught in a fishing line at the bottom. It's it's just a of all the, the rocks and the reef down here, it's easy to get fishing lines in the eye. So if you have to uh, detangle yourself or your partner, you have that. Uh, here's our tank and regulator. And we also carry a compass for underwater navigation. Most of the time the, the visibility under here is really bad. It's probably anywhere from one foot to four feet. Uh, we do get better days, but this is uh, so we know where we're going. So your searches are quite uh, Sometimes it's very slow and, and methodical. We'll, we'll create a search pattern and we'll use our, our compass to navigate and do a search pattern based on the conditions and the time of day. So, so let's say that there's two people underwater. How does that that jumped off the west end. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a couple of different searches. Yeah. So, so if the buoy is here, right, we have a line on there, we can use that line also. What we'll do is Fred will be sitting right here and he'll give me five foot of line and that, that will be me. That's five feet. And I'll turn all the way around. I'll do one circle. Once I get here, I'll pull on the line once. Red will extend the line 10 feet. We'll do another search. So we'll we'll go, we'll saturate the area. That's one search we'll do. The other search we'll do is if that's the buoy, we drop the buoy, 
Fred and I will be probably about five feet from each other. One of us will be below, one will be higher. And we'll kick, we'll, have, we'll do five kicks this direction, and we'll come back to the buoy, and we'll kick five kicks that direction. We'll come back to the buoy again. Five, five, and we'll extend it up to 10. So we're basically saturating the area. Maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes with that piece of equipment. We'll saturate and we'll know where they are at. The distances you adjust are based off of the visibility. If your visibility is really poor, you can't spread out. Yeah. You, you know, if you, if you can't see more than three feet, you can't go really more than three feet away from each other or, you know, change your line. And it's like you want to overlap what you're doing as, as best as possible in that same space. So you can swim next to each other and pivot. So if you're swimming out and George stays on Fred's right, when he gets to the end of your kick, then Fred would just pivot in place. George would swap sides and come back, and now you're overlapping your space. His search in the water and stuff does move people around, so you don't necessarily want to just gap out that space. It's all, there is no policy. This, there's no hard line policy that we follow because there's so many variations to what we call it. I mean, I'm sure it's very similar to some of the stuff that you guys do as far as So, if we do have two harbor guards here, if me and Fred are here, we dive. Right before we go underwater, you guys get on scene. The most important thing is to look at the time when we went underwater, to put approximate 20 minutes, so you know in 20 minutes, if we don't come up, there's alarms. Another thing is to get down to that ladder and start following our bubbles. If you follow our bubbles, you'll know where we are. So, you'll know exactly where we are you know where the last bubble you saw. Obviously you can't follow us all the way under the pier because we only have a small catwalk, but you could see which direction we went. So you know in like 25 minutes the last time I saw them, they were the north end or northwest end. So those are some things like timing. It's like a helicopter, you know, we got so much time in the air, so much time underwater. If we don't come up in 20 minutes and 25 minutes, those are alarms like, hey, we need to get other rescuers in the water. Or is it, uh, is there any way to like signal you with a flashlight or is it really pretty bad? The best way would probably bang something metal against the ladder. Okay. It's really loud to draw to try and draw that attention. The sound travels pretty well, so if we just hear a repetitive, you know, banging, then it, that might be something to get us to come to the surface. And I mean that would be something good, let's say suddenly that the pops person up pops up and starts moving. Right. Uh, something else happened, you know, somebody else jumped in. We've had, we've had times we've been in on two, uh, two rescues, rescuing two underneath the pier, coming over here trying to load them up, and suddenly there's a third person in the water that's related to the group, but she jumped in later, you know, and so now, like, if we didn't catch it, you guys saw it, that would be like, hey, getting our attention, that somebody else went in, you know, or just random, we've had three jumpers that are unrelated to each other, they're just, we're kind of cold, and yeah, just three different people decided to go off the same night. Ideally, we would need two in, two out. Two people are in the water rescuing. And every time we have a uh, dive training here, we always have somebody as safe. So two in, two out, two people are in the water, two people are ready to rescue. Or when they come up, you have two more people going in the water. But that necessarily doesn't work out. Uh, it's almost like firefighters, two in, two out rule. Really on a planned dive, that's what we need. On a, on a recovery, that's what we need. Room. Just give you a refresher on where we store the equipment there. Get splinters. 
train in under five minutes. <laughs> uh, so just a little bit quick refresher. We have the fins up here. You can just pick your size. Uh, I think on some of the sh some of them they actually have like what your shoe size would be, like 11 to 12. Uh, I'm uh, medium typically. Uh, we, we, we have some down here. Fin belts are ready, all, all set, ready to go. Uh, the reason we like this is if we're running down the pier or we can throw this on. And we'll have we'll have a, a flashlight on here, and we also have a, a dive knife. That's in case we get entangled in the bottom. So these lights, if, they should be on a steady burn if we're in the rescue mode. Uh, a steady on. Uh, I'll show you on the rescue tubes as well. Uh, if that gets turned, if you see us, uh, our strobe light flashing, that means we're, we need help. We're in we're in trouble. So you'll never see us put a. Um, a steady burn on if we're in the middle of the rescue, unless, or on the flash, I'm sorry, unless we need help. Um, so we have these set up here. We have the some PFDs up here. These are the Mustangs. They'll automatically inflate if you jump in the water with those. Those are automatic. They have a little CO2 charge. Um, we have helmets in case of big surf. Uh, they have flashlights on them. Uh, it's not too often, but if it, yeah, if it gets windy, big surf, um, you don't want to go into the pilings without that helmet. Last note position buoy, uh, you may recall, we call the LKP. This, you're gonna to deploy it. It's gonna be, you just pull back on this collar. These little flukes will come out. So this is gonna be used when someone goes submerged and we wanna know and mark the last position that the person was seen in the water. So we throw it out, this will automatically unspool, this buoy floats, the chain will go to the bottom and it will mark that spot. If you can, make sure you crack the uh, cam light here before, if it's at nighttime, daytime, it doesn't matter. Nighttime, we'll go ahead and crack that. So that'll be where we're gonna start our search from. Um, and that's the buoy you guys were referring to. Yes. yes, so we have a miniature version of it on the RDU unit. We have this one here. We have this other version of it here. We keep one, basically at all, all our vehicles in the office, we have one just so that we always, you can go grab one. So that's one thing that if we're in the water, we might say, hey, Officer Patrick, can you please go grab a, a LKP buoy? Um, this is what we're gonna do. So that, this is more, yeah, except for the submerged victim in the water, that's what we're gonna use this. Um, PFDs we have here, if you have multiple people in the water, we have uh, flotation devices here. These are just the standard ones you'll see like on a, no, a ferry boat. You go across Catalina Island, you can cross <laughs> over the neck, you just buckle on the, the, the waistline. And then of course we have the Stokes basket. So we have, uh, we're gonna go into the, well, first any, any questions? Um, any equipment? Uh, we'll go ahead and jump into the, the Stokes basket. So we keep the controllers lined up right here. Mark voice this voice. To start the, the voice, you're just gonna you know, hit this switch here, you just turn to the, the left, or clockwise, and you'll hear it kind of click on. And you can operate all three, so you have up, down, in, out on the trolley, or you can rotate the crane uh, clockwise or kind of clockwise. So you can rotate any of these three directions at one given time. Uh, we have three motors on it. You need to stop it, emergency stop, you can stop with the red, red button here. Um, yeah, just stop. I mean, that will shut it down. So, and you just pop it to reset it. That's it. So, who wants to operate? So, we're going to bring the. Um, we're going to walk out here. We're going to unhook it from the boat. We're going to bring the Stokes basket over, and we're going to hook it up, and we're going to put it in the water. So, does anyone just give one a? Grab the Stokes basket. It's kind of heavy. It's a little top heavy, so maybe two people. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we'll get the Stokes basket hooked up. We'll get you guys some PS2. Yeah, you can take it any, any way you want. So let's go ahead and jump in the ground. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can do the fins and like and rescue someone. I want to keep things. all these, well, uh, then practice with these, these yellow straps. Yeah, these are the ones we're going to do to tie, tie the victim in. Uh, we keep those kind of staged. So when, when you are tying them off, you just grab one, you reach over the person, you just grab it, and go. 
gonna, you can just cinch it down as you go. Um, you don't wanna undo this side and go around and do that side, it just wastes time. So you can just reach right over the victim and grab it. So this is where it's gonna hang from. This is heavy, so safety consideration. That block is very heavy, so just mind, mind the space when it's overhead. You don't wanna be in the bite. So what the bite is, is when you're between the moving object or the load and uh, a hard surface like the pool, the railing, any, any surface where you're gonna be pinched in between. So just be situational awareness, keep in mind where that hoist is, um, where the block is. Uh, and I'll, I'll go in, and when in, you're in the water, when this is at water level, when the swell comes, it's gonna go up and down, up and down. So you gotta be careful to watch your head. Um, the operator at the top will, will probably try to feather it down just to the right height where it's not bouncing all over the place. But we'll, we'll need to get this in the water to get the victim on. So it's gonna be kind of, you know, maybe just right about here at the water level. Uh, a little side note on that, the operator that's up here, you know, that when you guys come out, we're the ones in the water. We could be so focused on what we're doing, we're not really paying attention to what's happening here, right? So if you see that coming close to our head, you are our eyes. Yeah. You know, scream at us, watch your head, because that, that block's probably 80 pounds. We don't want to get hit by that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then we become another another victim in this water. So you guys just start screaming at us, hey, watch your head, watch your head. You know, if it's gotten close a couple of times because the, the stuff's changed, that reminds us to start paying attention. So we used uh, clear communication. It's either stop, you just close fist. You can go up or down if you want. So up, down, or stop. And that's all we really, the communication. So if I... If I'm in the water, I yell up, hey, stop, stop. Just yell back, okay, I'm stopping. You know, just so that we, we all are on the same page. And a lot of times, this does start off slow and does move slow, and it's hard for us to see the reaction of it happening. So if we're yelling up, 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 you know, again, don't take offense to it. You know, don't be like, I am! You know, we, you know, just, just keep pushing that button, you know, pressing up, whatever, you know, that kind of thing, so that, that communication is going back and forth. So, because it will take a moment for us to kind of see what's happening, especially if it's floating. We're not necessarily seeing the change in the slack and, and that kind of stuff that's going on. So, in the heat of everything that's going on, we're just trying to get communication across and it can come across as like, hey, you know, start doing something for us kind of thing. And that's not what it's meant. So, so we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and unhook this block. So, go ahead and turn it on. And then you're going to... That's all. Telling you it's all. That's how it's on. The right first here. time, the first time you might hear a click. If you never heard a click, mm -hmm. hit it again. If you hear that horn, it's on. Okay. And then. Yeah. 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 You're lower it. Lower it. So down. Put down. Yeah, super fast. Link, you might miss it. Always, <laughs> always push hard on the up and down. It's a two speed. If you push. So I'm gonna go up because of the light. Yeah. Oh, oh. I'm making sure it goes on Okay. In. So, yeah. You can do them all at the same time. So up and down on that is two speed, just mash it. It's going to go for a second or two slow, and then it'll start speeding up. If you don't press hard on the button, it'll stay in the slow mode. We'll put it over just above the water and then we'll grab some fins and we'll go over the, the rescue tube and then we'll, get, we'll jump in. Okay. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, hold your breath a little bit. We'll see how long it takes for that. Someone want to hook it up? Yeah, that's good. As you lift up, we'll just kind of guide it over the railing. Are you worried about that strap that's hanging? Yeah. 
So if you like fans, we can get you some fans. They're just easier to float with, right? Float? <laughs> <laughs> probably need size spins. Uh, you could probably use mine. <laughs> yeah, you can just slip on. Uh, the bottom is going to be the bottom. That's going to be the drink. I was testing. You passed. You see my account? Let me get you some. Just get a wetsuit and a bathroom test. We get it. Works, right? Yeah. Second job. Someone's cool. Where you coming from? The city in the water. That's what happens in the hotel. We understand that. You gotta go to Owens. Yeah. Hey, kid, do you know where Cat's bag is? Uh, it's upstairs. Put these on in the water. Sure. Or I can do that if you want. Sure. No, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You put it on, try it on. Make sure it fits. Yeah, so I'll go with that. Jump off. When we jump off, we have a rescue fan and a rescue two. 
So this is the, the Peterson tube. It was uh, invented by Pete Peterson. Uh, different iteration of this, but it was the first one was inflatable. But uh, this is the Peterson, what is known as the Peterson tube. It's used around the world um, as a rescue device. Um, world. It's actually a, a station here on the pier as a lifeguard. Oh, wow. Really? And, and, with and with harbor control. Yeah, with the harbor control. Yeah. So it was invented right here. This is invented right here on the pier. Well, well, what have you guys invented? <laughs> <laughs> Stuff for you guys. <laughs> so, when, so when I when I jump off, um, I'll be holding on to the railing. I'll take a nice big leap off. I hold my fins in one hand to the side. If you hold in the front, you could hold in the front here, but just it could you know hit you in the face and hurt hurt you. In the other hand, I'll have the rescue tube. I'll I'll take the loop and I'll put it in my hands and right as I jump out I can throw this out and it'll get it away from me. So but I'll keep my hand on this loop so that way when I jump in I'll have to do just grab on. I already have my hand in the loop and I'm just throw it right over my shoulder. And jump off. If it's nighttime we'll put it on a steady. Uh, if we get in trouble I'm not really flashing. Cool. <laughs> and then the way to stick it is tap on the metal you can tap on it. Yeah, you can tap, if we're underwater, you can tap, you can, you can grab a wrench from the, the workshop, which is over there. You can bang on it. Um, you can flash your, your flashlight at us. You can yell, yell for us. But, uh, if we're underwater, it'll probably be about 20 minutes, 30 minutes at most. Um, so uh, when it comes to the rescue tube, uh, we can use this to, you'll see on, on one end we have a clip. We have a, a ring on the other end. So what, what this is basically used for when we come up to the victim, we're basically wrapping it around it, making like a donut, flipping them in. And basically, they're going to have it dangling. So, <laughs> so this is what it's going to look like when it's used on it. Now they can hold on to that. Now I have this. I can tow them with it. I'm going to have this attached to me. Now, if, if he gets a little feisty and a little 415, I can always let go, and now he has something to float on. So when it comes to some of these, these, uh, yeah. There's two rings on it, so you, there's two different points that you can connect oh, you can it, so if somebody's bigger. And if, it's, if you really need to, you can actually even clip it onto the strap itself if you really need a bigger. Um, when we first approach a, a victim that's in the water, and if, especially if they're you know, we don't know what their mental status is. We try to approach with some distance and hand them this. If they're actively drowning, we'll hand them this first so they can grab on something. We want them to grab on the tube, not us. Um, that's for another time, if, you know, for releases and kind of defending yourself in the water. Um, if they're unconscious and they're unresponsive, then we're just gonna have to get this on them as quickly as possible. Try to support their head and, and keep their head out of water and try to get them over to the slow stop stage as quickly as you can. But if they're, um, if they're active, they're gonna to wanna to grab onto this and they're gonna, we'll just go ahead and just tell them who we are, what we're doing, hey, we're gonna we're gonna put this little float around you, just stay calm, what's your name, you know, and you just go through what what happened. So any questions? I know it's a quick crash course, but you know, um, in lifeguard academies they spend a lot of time on this. How long is lifeguard academy? Uh, each agency is different, so if you're certified by the United States Life Saving Association, each uh, agency has their own program, but a certain set of guidelines and standards. So it could be 160 hours, it could be 200 hours, it's up to the agency if they have specific training they want to add in or take out. But there's a certain set of guidelines guided by the United States Life Saving Association. So here at the harbor, we are a United States Life Saving Association uh, certified agency for lifeguarding, a more lifeguarding. I see, I see the board up here. Uh, it's about 160 hours. Okay. Let's try to take my certificate. I assume that was for like the short one. You're only making it about four hours. Yeah, yeah, this this throw that in. Yeah, yeah we'll, and with the rescue board, we'll throw it in. We'll actually we keep a board right out here. Uh, so if it's a little. Wow. Pardon? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, if it's a longer distance or there's multiple victims or we need to get maybe going to shore. Sometimes this will be faster, so we can throw this in, we'll drop it in, we'll paddle over to the victim, we'll have them get on, or if they're 
um, responsive, we can pull them on the board and we can take them into shore or we can bring them back to the, the Stokes Pass. That's what we do with the last, the last one. Yeah, the yeah, last person. That one's face the beach. The, the, the other is the, yeah. the mental status, right? I talked to you about different types of jumpers, right? Sometimes we've had people jump off and start swimming out, out to sea. They're hearing voices, want to go join somebody. They're swimming out to sea. For us to chase them swimming, we're exerting a lot of it, a lot of energy to have to bring them back, right? And they may not want to come back. Throwing in either the board or launching the boat is an opportunity for us to save energy, stay out and stay less exposed to the conditions that are going on. You go out to where that patient's at, or the, you know, the person's at, and then evaluate how we're bringing them back. We might just be sitting out there waiting for them to tire out because they don't want to be rescued and then at least we're not uh, we're not having to tread water the entire time too so that it does come as a great tool we've had as an example of 4 35 o'clock in the morning I had a pure jumper that uh, swam out to sea and they lost sight of them so the decision was made between me and my partner to launch the boat we didn't even bother jumping in first we didn't know where he was at we didn't launch the paddleboard where are we gonna go we can stay uh, above water and exert no energy by putting the boat in the water and patrolling around on it then. So, like I said, there's no exact policy. Everything is what's the story coming up and those then decisions are made from there, so. So next we'll go, uh, you guys don't have any questions? Or we'll go over to the, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna go over to the we're gonna go over to the corner over here. If everyone's good with that, we'll we'll jump off the corner. We're gonna drop the, the mannequin in the water, and we'll we'll all go underneath the pier, kind of get an eye level. I'll point out a few things, some safety things when we're under the pier, and we'll we'll bring the, the mannequin over to Stokes. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, here we go. Now that we're all yeasty. <laughs> <laughs> Jump to it at a time, just make sure you got the space. When you hit the water, just get a signal that you're okay. You do that by just tapping your head like that. It's, that means okay. So that means you're not hurt. You didn't get hurt jumping in the water. Um, and what if you are hurt? How do you hurt? hold this again? If you are hurt, you I'm hurt. To. Help me. Hey, Dan's going to drop the board first. That way there's no one in the water. Yes. Um, are you doing slowly like this? So yeah, you can right hold right it off the side. Right uh, so the strap is just tucked in here. You can just take it, pop it out. And I can you can you throw it as you're jumping, right? Uh, yeah, as I'm jumping, right? yeah, that's fine too. Yeah, if you want, and then so you can you pop it out. Right? So it's ready to undo and right. just hold it. Put your hand through the, 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 the tube. But when you jump, you Yeah, I, I do. I throw it off to the side. As you're falling. Yeah, as I'm falling, like right before I hit the water. Just like this? Now you really yeah, yeah, just chuck it. Just, just make sure you're holding onto the strap. And even if you accidentally let go, it's okay. You can find it. It'll fall, right? The yeah. only time it's really important <laughs> is when it's you. really windy. Yeah, yeah. You Somebody really want to hold on to that because it'll go flying away. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to let go before you Ready? jump off because it could get hung up while you're falling. Then, it could, you could end up straddling the strap. So now you've got a hold of it in your hand, and the buoy's catching float, and it's gonna toss you and turn you in the water, and not be real comfortable. So ideally, you still have it in your hand until you've stepped over the edge. So yeah. you could unravel it and hold on to some of it in the slack in your hand, or you can let it unravel as you fall. There's different ways to do it, but don't don't drop it and then jump off because it's a hazard that way. And whatever you do, do not put it on the strap over your shoulder when you're jumping off because we don't want the accident. There's all kinds of things you can get caught up on. That's a safety hazard. So that's why we, we keep it in our hand when we jump off so it doesn't get hung up. So if it does get hung up and you're you know, when you're jumping off, it'll release easy. So we can all jump in at one time if you want, or Dude, you go a couple at a time. Dan's gonna throw the board in first. Okay. Since I'm old, this is the only thing they let me do. <laughs> when we toss this, if you ever toss it down, hang it like this, kind of angle it slightly. You don't want to drop it where there is a piling, right there. Yeah. So you want to kind of go in between the two pilings. Right 
<laughs> so, um, to get him off, do you guys, if he's completely unconscious, you just... And so a lot of times what we'll do is just disconnect from here. And then we'll just drag the whole thing inside. Drag the whole thing? We'll just drag the whole thing inside. We, we can start taking care of There's a paramedic, you just slide him on the paramedic. He's not going to yeah. But usually we're doing some PR and everything before then. So we can slide the whole thing in or we can grab the patient out and take the patient in for some privacy because we're typically going to be cutting off clothing, doing whatever. In the middle of the summer, these stairs will be used just full of people watching. Can I jump from here? Can I jump from here? Yeah. yeah. Make sure that everybody's in there first. I want to hit that. Uh, hey. Hey, I'll, I'll jump out. I'm going I'm to get on the board. Uh, Sergeant Williams and Fred are going for the long swim. It'll be about 350, 350 yards. Our annual test. Yeah, yeah. So, as far as we'll just start getting up there in eight, it's a little bit harder than 10 minutes.
Yeah, the, uh, the reason we're training with the uh, Harbor Guards today is uh, as the Pure Safety Task Force, we're most likely to be uh, nearby and able to, to be the first ones on scene to help them out in the water rescue or just helping them do what they do in the, uh, in the water. So we want to be oriented to what uh, and how they do their work.